Okay, today I'm going to discuss a, uh, a nutrient. This was uh, a request under one of my, uh, under the comment section under one of my videos, somebody requested information on a substance called PQQ. PQQ. The PQQ stands for pyrella quinoline quinone. I'm not going to keep using those big words. I'm going to just call it PQQ. PQQ was formerly thought to be a vitamin. It was uh, actually discovered or isolated in 1979. It's one of the newer nutrients. And when they uh, first discovered it, they thought it might be a vitamin, a new, the new, a new vitamin. And a new vitamin hadn't been discovered in God knows how many years, 70, 80 years, maybe more than that. And then they found this PQQ, which seemed to act as a growth factor in bacteria and in animals. So based on that, they initially call, called it a new vitamin. Uh, you know, but it wasn't a, it turns out that uh, another review came out in 2000, 2003 in Nature Medicine, I think the journal was, which basically concluded that PQQ is not a vitamin for the simple reason that it's a, uh, there's no actual nutritional deficiency that can be traced directly to a lack of uh, PQQ, although it does cause stunted growth in animals and it's needed for bacteria also. It's involved in enzyme activity in bacteria. But in humans, since they could not establish a definite deficiency syndrome related to a lack of PQQ, PQQ it didn't qualify as a vitamin, so it's called a non-vitamin nutrient. That's the way it's referred to today. Um, there's a couple of natural foods that contain PQQ. Uh, natto is a soy product. It contains, that's the, that contains the highest amount of PQQ. Other foods include parsley, green peppers, egg yolks, spinach, tofu, and green tea. But I should also point out that the amount of PQQ found in these foods is measured in nanograms. A nanogram is a billionth of a gram. So the amount of PQQ found naturally in food is infinitesimal. Now compare that to taking a PQQ supplement. The average uh, dose in, uh, uh, of uh, a PQQ supplement in one capsule is 10 milligrams, which is thousands and thousands, million, actually billions of times more than you'd find in the food. So uh, what is P PQQ is a very potent antioxidant. And uh, unlike other, the way other antioxidants like, for instance, vitamin E and C, the way they work is you have these things called free radicals or re reactive oxygen species. They're byproducts of oxygen metabolism. They're, they usually uh, are lacking an electron, and they try and hook on to other tissues or substances that have electrons to gain an electron. But by doing that, they cause cellular damage. Now, what antioxidants do, like vitamin E, is contribute an electron to the free radical. So now you have two electrons and it becomes stabilized. But in doing so, when vitamin E gives up the electron, it becomes itself a free radical. Now, if you have other nutrients around like coenzyme Q10 or uh, NAC, they can turn the vitamin E back into a, a, uh, an antioxidant pretty rapidly, which explains why antioxidant sub, uh, you know, that's why when you when you take in nutrients, you want to take them all together because they kind of work together. Something like in this situation where, you know, some nutrients will kind of restart the antioxidant activity of other nutrients. Now, PQQ is different because uh, it can re be recycled in the cell thousands of times. It, it's not burn up real fast like normal antioxidants. So, and it has what they call a redox action where it can either stimulate oxidation or reduce oxidation, depending on the amount. Uh, it's called redox. Uh, recent studies suggest that PQQ can uh, provide brain protection effects. And a few human studies have even found increases in memory and cognition or thinking ability following supplementation with PQQ. Specifically, what these human studies have found is that 20 milligrams a day of uh, PQQ increases the blood circulation to what they call the prefrontal cortex, which is the, um, uh, that's considered the, the uh, site of intelligence, logic, and memory in the human brain. Well, PQQ apparently can increase the, uh, shit, can increase the, uh, I thought the tape stopped for a second. It can increase the uh, uh, blood flow to the uh, prefrontal cortex by doing so, uh, because that's the site of memory, it can increase memory and possibly IQ a little bit. But that's kind of up in the air, but there's a problem with that because even though P PQQ can, can uh, 
increase the blood circulation to, to that part of the brain. PQQ itself cannot enter the brain. So it can increase the blood circulation, blood circulation, but it can't enter the brain itself. Uh, PQQ can also, also offer some anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, there was a study of 10 subjects that lasted for a month. The study found that PQQ lowered levels of C-reactive protein by 45% and also lowered levels of interleukin-6, which is an inflammatory cytokine. Now, CRP stands for C-reactive protein. It's a measure of, of uh, inflammation in the body. It's not specific. In other words, when you take a, a blood test uh, and you have a higher level of CRP, it indicates there's inflammation somewhere in your body, but it really doesn't tell you where. It's just a general indicator. Uh, interleukin-6 is an inflammatory cytokine, which again is increased uh, during inflammatory conditions, and PQQ appears to lower that. This study uh, that was published uh, that showed that uh, PQQ lowers these two substances, that was published in 2013. And it also found that, uh, this I found much more interesting, is that PQQ significantly lowers levels of TMO. I've mentioned TMO in other uh, videos. TMO is produced from the nutrients choline and carnitine, and some studies suggest that TMO can initiate atherosclerosis, heart disease, and which can cause uh, heart attack, strokes, and even diabetes. And uh, the fact that PQQ can lower T, uh, TMAO, uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. And in this study, the subject suggested an average dose of PQQ of anywhere from 20 to 23 milligrams a day. Another 2012 human study that involved 17 human subjects and lasted for eight weeks showed that ingesting 20 milligrams a day of PQQ lowered levels of fatigue and improved sleep. The study subjects also reported significantly lower feelings of stress. PQQ appears to promote the synthesis of, of new mitochondrion cells. In fact, that's probably the biggest selling point of PQQ. PQQ stimulates an uh, a, uh, enzyme called PGC1A, which is the master regulator of mitochondrial genesis. Then the mitochondria are cigar-shaped organelles found in the cytoplasm or liquid portion of cells the mitochondria are the site of both energy production as ATP, as well as fat oxidation in a process called beta oxidation. Now, PQQ, by stimulating PGC1A, stimulates, uh, you have anywhere from 2 to 200 mito mitochondria in every cell. And PQQ, by stimulating PGC1A, promotes the genesis of uh, mitochondria, which can, which can have a great effect on, on retention of muscle and also lowering the aging process. Because when mitochondria disappear in cells, the cells undergo a process called apoptosis, self-destruction, or they become senescent, which is dead cells that just release inflammatory chemicals that are very bad for your health. Isolated studies suggest that P, uh, PQQ may also activate other proteins called CERT1 and CERT3. So that stands for, CERT stands for sirtuin. It's uh, often associated with another nutrient called resveratrol and other nutrients. Uh, sirtuin, uh, sirtuins are proteins that are considered to be cell protective. One of the mechanisms of calorie restriction, meaning that calorie restriction as in science studies has been shown the only way to kind of slow the aging process in animals, ranging from mice to dogs to cow, you name it. They're not so sure it works just the same in humans, but there is some evidence that it might help a bit. But one of the main mechanisms of calorie restriction is that it increases these sirtuin proteins which are cell protecting. Sirtuin proteins are released under stress, and calorie restriction is a form of stress. Uh, that you can call it good stress because it induces a number of changes in the human body that lead to cell pres preservation. A study out of Japan showed that supplementing with, with, with PQQ uh, significantly lowered levels of LDL, LDL cholesterol in 29 adults, and I've talked about LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is low-density lipoprotein. It's a, uh, a uh, it's produced in the liver. It carries cholesterol in the blood, and uh, it uh, it uh, when it gets oxidized, it's related to the onset of atherosclerosis and heart disease. So, uh, PQQ might, in that respect, might help prevent heart disease. Rat studies show that 62% of an oral dose of PQQ uh, is, is, is absorbed. Uh, 
The range, however, is 18 to 89 percent absorption. So that so PQQ is pretty readily absorbed. In the brain, PQQ modulates the activity of the NMDA receptor. Now, the NMD receptor is an excit uh, excitatory uh, neuro, uh, receptor. Uh, uh, when it when uh, when you have a stroke. Your brain secretes too much of an amino acid called glutamate, which overexcites the NDMA receptor and causes much of the damage associated with having a stroke. Well, it turns out that PQQ modulates the activity of the NMDA receptor, which offers brain protection against glutamate toxicity. So theoretically, PQQ might, uh, if, you, if you are unfortunate enough to have a stroke, PQQ might offer some protection against some extensive damage, but that hasn't been tested. That's just theoretical. Animal studies of PQQ show that it offers protection against Parkinson's disease. Isolated studies have found that PQQ enhances the release of nerve growth factor. Nerve growth factor is like fertilizer for the brain. It stimulates, as it, as it sounds, it stimulates the growth of new, neuro, new neurons. So it's uh, uh, another substance which increases nerve growth factor is lion's mane, a type of mushroom. But apparently PQQ can also increase uh, NGF or nerve growth factor in the brain. And uh, they think it does so by reacting with chemicals called eicosanoids, which are made from fat, dietary fat. In rats, PQQ does help to uh, prevent strokes. PQQ lowers elevated blood triglyceride. That's fat in the blood. PQQ lowers elevated blood triglyceride levels more effectively than fish oil due to a stimulation of beta oxidation of the fatty acids. In other words, probably because of the uh, development of new mitochondria fostered by PQ, PQQ intake, uh, the, uh, the uh, triglycerides in the blood tend to be kind of oxidized more rapidly, uh, the fatty acid content in the mitochondria, which explains why uh, PQQ can help lower blood triglycerides. Now, this is a, a happened, they've shown this in animals, but there's no human evidence. And I'll say at this point that, like a lot of the other nutrients I've discussed, most nearly all the evidence of PQQ has been with animals, although there are about maybe four or five human studies, which I've already mentioned in this video. There has been some human studies, but not a lot. P P PQQ favors increased insulin activity, but it does not influence blood glucose levels. In other words, it might make uh, uh, insulin work a little bit better, but it doesn't affect your blood glucose levels. Normally, insulin lowers blood glucose levels. PQQ does alleviate fat-induced insulin resistance by increasing mitochondrial biogenesis in muscle cells, similar to the way exercise increases uh, mitochondrial development in muscle. Depleting the rat diet of PQQ appears to reduce the metabolic rates relative to a diet with adequate levels of PQQ, but no studies have investigated whether an increase in metabolic rate occurs with humans who take supplemental PQQ. In other words, it raises the arresting metabolic rate in animals, but we have no evidence it does the same in humans. One study using 0 0.075 to 0 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of PQQ supplementation daily for three weeks, increasing with the dose each week in otherwise healthy adults, this is a human study, has noticed a decrease in overall urinary amino acid levels by approximately 15% with the decrease in some such as serine, asparaginine, and aspartic acid being biomarkers for skeletal muscle consumption of nitrogen. In other words, uh, it, it, uh, theoretically what that means is that PQQ can possibly spare some amino acids and it might have a little bit of anabolic effect. Again, uh, it's, uh, you know, we don't really know this. It hasn't been tested in exercise, exercising humans. PQQ can also favorably influence immune function. And now, as far as regard to toxicity, high doses of PQQ, PQQ appear to adversely affect kidney function in animals. And now, that's really high doses. The dose provided to the animals was equivalent to a human ingesting 120 to 131 milligrams daily of PQQ. Now, that's a lot more than the suggested supplemental range of 10 to 20 milligrams. Taking 10 to 20 milligrams has not been shown to produce any toxicity. One study... You, one stomach, oh, I'm sorry, one human study using 20 milligrams of PQQ alone or in combination with 300 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 noted that there were no toxicological signs or symptoms associated with treatment over a 12-week period. 
and consumption of about 20 milligrams a day for 150 milligram person for one week has been noted to be safe. I should also point out that some people suggest uh, coenzyme Q10 is also a quinolone. Uh, it's, it's kind of not the same as PQQ, but similar in some respects. And this has led some people to believe, and there's a little bit of evidence to show this, that combining PQQ with coenzyme Q10 would be a great combination because PQQ increases the development of new mitochondria, whereas coenzyme Q10 works in the mitochondria to help produce energy. So, you know, taking both of them together would probably be a very good combination. I would say a good dose of both would be 20 milligrams a day of PQQ, along with about 200 milligrams a day of coenzyme Q10. But as I've said in past videos related to coenzyme Q10, it's a very fat-soluble vitamin. In other words, you got to take uh, coenzyme Q10 with a meal containing a fairly decent amount of fat. Otherwise, it'll pass right through. Uh, so keep that in mind. The best form of Q10 is ubiquinol. So keep that in mind. And uh, that's about it for uh, PQQ. Uh, I, I use it myself. I've taken it for a while. Uh, I can't tell you whether I've noticed anything. Uh, I take it mainly because of the, of the mitochondrial effect. Uh, based on the existing research with animals and humans, I do think that the one sure thing about uh, PQQ is that it'll definitely stimulate mitochondrial genesis, which is very important for slowing the aging process, important for maintaining muscle mass and general health. Uh, so uh, PQQ, because exercise also increases mitochondrial genesis, P PQQ is especially effective if you take it in, uh, in conjunction with exercise. I think that it'll really produce a pretty good uh, uh, level of health in your mitochondria and spare the mitochondria have and possibly slow the aging uh, process a bit. So I take I only take it once a day, and I take 20 milligrams. I take it in the morning. Uh, so that's about it. If you want to have the best information you'll ever find anywhere in depth on nutrition, food supplements, which ones work, which ones don't, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, women's health and fitness, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, what else, uh, exercise science. All of these things are covered each month, 40 to 50 pages, no ads, just pure evidence-based information in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's written in simple English. I have well over 40 years of writing, professional writing experience. I know how to translate technical terms. Anybody who's gotten as far as the sixth grade will be able to fully understand my Applied Metabolics newsletter, unlike some other uh, digital publications which are written in kind of medical journal style, very hard to understand, very hard to read. My, my uh, Applied Metabolics is written in magazine style since I was a magazine writer for almost 40 years. I know how to write for the public, but I also include you know enough science in there that'll interest even a, 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 science, a science literate person will still learn new material. In fact, I don't care what your educational level is, you'll, you'll learn something every month in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I guarantee that. So, you know, uh, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Well, each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, medicine, and general health every day. Really interesting stuff. I also answer questions from current subscribers to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics newsletter. However, it's strictly for current subscribers of my Applied Metabolics only. I don't answer unsolicited questions. Uh, so you have to be a subscriber. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments underneath uh, the videos, including suggestions for future videos. Uh, I, I sometimes answer the comments, sometimes I don't. It depends on my time. But you're welcome to leave comments. Uh, and uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the best. Thank you for listening.